Walter's situation was now desperate. In that six months, she had been subjected to quite appalling bombing. There had been 157 days of continuous air attack. Uh, London's worst was 67. In April alone, 7,000 tons of bombs fell on Malta. Um, This is about the same as fell on the whole of the United Kingdom in the worst month of the Battle of Britain. The authorities in Malta kept the food stocks under continuous survey. And they were continually assessing how long the food would last. Rations were already down to the absolute bare minimum. They couldn't be reduced anymore. Uh, And they kept uh, running a target date, the date on which the food would finally run out, and Malta would have no alternative but surrender. The people knew about this. The assistant, the deputy governor, broadcast uh, uh, the the situation, uh, the food situation, the stocks. There was a target date, but he said, I can't tell you what the target date is because that information would be very valuable to the enemy. But I can tell you we have very high hopes that more stores will arrive before that target date is reached. The target date was, in fact, the 7th of September. Uh, Back in England, Churchill and the Chiefs of Staffs uh, were were absolutely convinced of the strategic importance of of Malta and were determined that a really major effort had to be made to bring it relief. The thing is, we did hear there was a big thing coming up, a big operation coming up, but apparently Malta was within a few days, just a few days of having to capitulate and give in, and we couldn't afford to lose Malta, no way, because it would have given, we wouldn't have been able to do all that Middle East thing, you know, and beat Rommel and all that if, that, if we'd lost Malta. Apparently, the powers that be decided, they'd had one or two convoys through before, but they decided this was going to be the biggest, and it was the biggest ever assembled convoy to relieve Malta and get some oil through as well. Now, this film's been made and recordings and BBC, I think, and ITV, or somebody's got this thing, and they've shown it. But in my recollection, I know it, it was a great big convoy, and everywhere you look, those ships, if it wasn't, uh, for, you know, frigate, fr- uh, freighters and things like that, it were warships or destroyers or carriers, everywhere you looked, it was a massive convoy. A splendid uh, convoy of 14 new fast merchant ships was assembled, including one tanker which had to be chartered from the Americans, although it was British man. It was chartered from Texaco. An escort of three aircraft carriers, the Victorious, the Indomitable, and the Eagle, uh, two battleships, the Nelson and the Rodney, uh, seven cruisers and some 30 destroyers uh, was assembled. The destroyers were drawn from the home fleet, from western approaches, uh, and from Force H. One of the carriers uh, sailed home from the Indian Ocean uh, to join um, join this escort. A separate and concurrent operation was planned for a fourth uh, aircraft carrier, which was to fly 70 uh, reinforcement Spitfires to Malta uh, in two waves, uh, going back to Jib to reload between. And let's just look ahead now to see what was waiting. And first, we see seven submarines, five Italian and two German, uh, on patrol here, waiting for the convoy. Uh, In Sardinia, there are four airfields, uh, and in uh, Sicily, four more airfields, and again another airfield in Pantelleria, where well over 300 German and Italian bombers were based. Uh, and in addition to that, a reconnaissance aircraft uh, and fighters. In Cagliari, in Palermo, Messina, and Naples uh, were forces of Italian cruisers and destroyers. Well, our first operation in Victorious was um, the notorious 
Ohio, August 1942, Malta Convoy. Uh, this was a 13-ship convoy, uh, which was called a fast convoy, i.e. it was a 16-knot convoy, not 8 and 10, some of the slow Atlantic convoys were. Uh, in the middle of the merchantman, we had the tanker Ohio, which had been chartered from an American oil company because it was a very fast, as, as they went then, turbine tanker. And she was carrying 100 octane fuel intended for the fighter aircraft being used in the defense of Malta from German air raids and Italian air raids. Um, a tremendously dangerous, volatile cargo of fuel on board this ship. And, of course, it was the center of maximum attention from all air raids that subsequently took place around the, the convoy. She was the, the main ship. They were quite determined would not get to Malta. August 42, we... Um were given some indication that we were going on a, a fairly dangerous uh, mission and uh, indeed so it proved we um, were sent on a convoy to Malta uh, three aircraft carriers ourselves HMS Indomitable and HMS Eagle uh, these merchantmen had been specifically selected because they were all able to steam at a minimum of 13 knots and so accomplish a journey to Malta in the shortest possible time in the Mediterranean but as soon as we got into the Mediterranean and the Germans and the Italians knew we were coming then life got difficult The whole convoy lasted 15 days from the time it sailed from the Clyde to the time it arrived in Malta uh, although the action was packed into the last five uh, passage through the Atlantic was relatively uneventful. The convoy swept well out in the Atlantic to keep clear of submarines and reconnaissance aircraft. Uh, opportunity was taken to exercise the convoy in emergency turns and changing station, as they would have to do, until they could maneuver like a flotilla of destroyers. Uh, the carriers, the three carriers, that had never worked together before and had some pilots who had never deck landed before uh, took the opportunity to do some in intensive um, flying training and practice. We didn't go straight to Malta, we went out into the Atlantic where all the escorts met. There was a Nelson, Rodney, and they were going to fire six inch guns at an 8,000 yards close fuse and uh, the Rodney did so as a, to show us and there on the horizon was a whacking great big as big as Portland black smoke where if any torpedo bombers would have, would have been coming in that way you know they'd have been just destroyed by the sheer blast alone also some of the ships the cruisers some of them the six inch were given a new type of shell with they could fire and it would uh, close range fuse because it was aircraft then in those days it was our biggest enemy however we went out we did operations which we didn't rec know what they were doing but we went round in circles and then the next day we steamed back through the uh, med with the convoy We uh, met up outside Jib in the, in the Atlantic and with the Indomitable, the Eagle, there were three fleet carriers, the Argus and the Furious, which weren't going to take part in the final run. The Argus carried spares and the Furious carried spitfires from Malta. And it was lovely and calm in the Atlantic before we entered the Med. And... Uh, we went. We passed Gibraltar at night, as far as I remember, so that the Germans wouldn't see us. Some hope. On the Malta convoy, we all congregated outside Gibraltar, 
at our same, and we sailed through the Straits of Gibraltar at midnight on the night, all the, and the convoy of the ships and the fleet. And the ferry boat coming across from Aldeciras, across to Spain, was all lit up, etc., and came straight through the fleet. We, could, we, had, we couldn't, if they were neutral. Yeah. Andrew, what happened next morning? We were dive bomb by Stukas and submarine and new boats were all around, etc., ships. As the convoy approached, the Straits of Gibraltar, the Knights of the 8th and 9th and the 10th, uh, virtually all the ships uh, slipped into Gibraltar under cover of darkness to top up with fuel. Uh, no doubt observers in the unfriendly neutral across the bay in Algeciras uh, noted this increased activity and reported that something big was on.